God bless you. Hope everyone is having a great day. This is Brother David. Got another beautiful scripture. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13, which says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. This verse in Strong's Greeks reads like this, Be on the guard, stand firm in the faith, be men of courage, be strong. And in wrapping up this letter, Paul has been addressing the details of some business matters as well as travel plans for himself and others. In a moment, he turns to sending greetings. But first, he inserts several series of quick commands. Paul's habit of doing this at the end of letters is like a parent telling their child things they need to do before they leave the house. Paul tells them to be watchful or stay on guard, along with the command to stay firm in the faith. He urges them to be steadfast and immovable. They must be on the lookout for any kind of false teaching. Paul also tells them to be men of courage and to be strong. He made it clear that their faith in Jesus will face opposition from the culture around them. They must be resolved to be remain in their faith with strength and courage. To stand fast means not to be blown by any wind of doctrine, to be strong as men. The faith is the Christian faith, sound doctrine. Paul means that they must watch out for the enemy who is like a roaring lion seeking who may devour. They must not allow people with wrong ideas to make their faith weak. They must be ready at all times for Christ's return. They must have courage and act like responsible adults. They will need strength to keep their faith pure from wrong ideas and wrong behavior. We as Christians will have trials and challenges in this life that will test our faith. But we need to know in who and what we believe in and do not doubt that our God is right here, right beside us right now. We as believers need to dig in our hills, as it were, and remain constant as we face any hardships in this life. Now, you may have noticed that over the past three days, we've been in the book of Corinthians. Three days in a row, we've been in the Corinthians. Now, this is the Lord, not me, because if it was just me, we would never leave the book of Psalms because that's one of my favorite books. Because I love that the entire Bible is God's love letter to an unlovable people. But the book of Psalms is, a lot of it is a love letter to God. And that's what I love about the book of Psalms. But just like the Lord has led us to cover Corinthians over the past three days, the Lord has also kept this theme of trials in this life. So I don't know, maybe somebody's, maybe you're going through something and going through some type of trial. So that's why the Lord keeps keeping us on this theme here. So as I said, whether you're a Christian or not, it doesn't matter what your religion is, your race, your age, where you live in this world. In this life, we all have ups and downs, good times and bad. Where life's going good and there's some turn in the road. A death in the family, something financial, something that unexpected happens. It just rocks your world. And we as Christians, we have a companion in this life that will go with us in the ups and downs of this life. That will be there with us in these turns in the road. And that is our Savior, Jesus. He's always right here beside us. He's right here beside us. He's holding our hand like a mama holding the baby's hand. The, the kids just... Walling down the sidewalk and they see daddy, so they wiggle their hand out of away from mama's hand. They take off running down that sidewalk and then they're waddling and waddling to get to daddy and they fall and skin their knee. What happens? They cry, they hold up their hands wanting to be picked up, and then mama scoops them up in her hands, holds them tight, lets them know everything's going to be all right. When we're going through these ups and downs in life, we need to hold on to his hand. Like that child holding on to their parents' hand, knowing that when we got mama's hand, as it were, when we're holding on to Jesus' hand, we know everything's going to be all right. And if we fall, 
He's going to scoop us up in his arms. And we're going to know that everything's going to be all right. You, everybody's seen a, a little toddler skinning their knees. Running to get to somebody. And you hear him, don't run. Plop. And they start crying and they're raising their hands up to the sky. Wanting someone to pick them up. And let them know that everything's going to be okay. We all have these ups and downs in life. There's always a turn in the road. But when we have Jesus as our companion, we know that everything's going to be all right. This is what he's telling them. You know, there's going to be ups and downs in this life. We need to watch, be on alert, standing fast in the faith, knowing what you believe, not letting someone tell you that you're wrong. And what we mean by that is reading the Bible for yourself, not taking what this person says or that person says. Don't take my word for it. Don't trust what I say. No one on this earth has the answers. I don't care who they are. They may tell you they do, but they don't. Only God has the answers, and you alone receive it through prayer and by reading his word. We need to be courageous and be strong, not letting trials and tribulations beat us down. We need to be knowing what we believe and trusting in the Lord for everything. And for those of you who may not know Jesus today, and that's why we share the gospel with the of you. Because that's the theme of what this was telling us today. Is troubles are going to come. We need to know what we believe. And for those of us who put our faith and trust in Jesus. We know that our God is going to be right there with us. We know that in his word he says he'll never leave us or forsake us. We know that everything he's promised is going to happen. He promises he's going to come again and get us. But if you don't know Jesus today, then you don't know about these promises. You don't know that the Lord is right there beside you. So I'd like to share the gospel today. You may not actually know who Jesus is. You may know what he did on the cross. Maybe you're playing games with him today. Today's the day to end the games. The gospel in a nutshell is that because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3, sin had entered the world. And sin creates a wall that separates all of us from God. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of punishment for our sin is death. Which means because of our sin, not one of us is worthy of going to heaven. Because there's that wall. And there's a punishment for sin. And because we sin, we deserve punishment. And we are all destined to destruction. We are all destined to separation. We are all destined to hell. Eternal separation from God. But here is the mercy of God that God loves you so much that God sent his son. Jesus left heaven, became a flesh and blood human, fully God, fully man. And Jesus lived a perfect sinless life. And on the cross, Jesus became sin for us to pay our sins. Meaning when Jesus was on the cross, here's a word picture for you. Jesus put our sins on himself like a garment. And those sins died on that cross with Jesus. These are past, present, and future sins. We weren't there. We hadn't committed the sins yet. He paid for them all. And because there's a punishment for sin, the wrath of sin was poured out on Jesus. Jesus took our punishment for our sins. The punishment that we deserve, Jesus took in our place because we're the one that should be punished because of our sins. We're the one that should die for our sins. But Jesus died for us. So then when we believe the gospel message and we are saved, now we put on Jesus' righteousness. Because we are all right now like a garment stained with sin before coming to Jesus. But when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then like being in a washing machine, we are washed clean with the precious blood of Jesus. And we are washed white as snow. And now when God looks at us, he doesn't see our sin. He doesn't see someone who messes up. Because we put Jesus' righteousness on like a garment. And now God sees Jesus. The gospel message is that Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day. And if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you will be saved. Whoever will believe in Jesus will have eternal life. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord. Call out to him and say, Lord, I need you. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Saved from what? 
Save from eternal separation. Save from the eternity in hell. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No man gets to the Father but by him. Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. There are not multiple ways to get to heaven. No one else will be able to save you. A preacher can't make you righteous and save you. Your mom and dad can't tell the Lord you've been a good person and they can't save you. Your works, your deeds can't save you. You can't be a good enough person. can't give enough to charity. Salvation can't be found anywhere else or in anyone else. Allah can't save you. Buddha can't save you. Salvation can only be obtained by Jesus Christ because Jesus is the door. On the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins, took our punishment in our place. Jesus' blood is what bought our ticket into heaven. Jesus' blood is what covered our sin debt, past, present, and future. Jesus' blood is what broke down that wall that separates us from God. So now we have access to the Father. We can just come to God and cry out and say, Lord, I need you. I'm going through something. I don't know a way out. I need you, Father. Jesus' blood redeemed us, bought us back, paid the ransom to free us from the power of sin, to free us from hell. And if you sincerely believe and surrender your life to Jesus, meaning you're not just saying words, you're not trying to please someone who's wanting you to be saved, or you're not looking for a get out of hell free card because someone scared you about hell, but you really believe in who Jesus is and what he did for you on the cross, and you truly want to live for him now, then you'll be saved. And this is Jesus' free gift to you. It's a free gift of grace. And all you have to do is accept it. Because we cannot earn our way to heaven. That's the, the part about grace. We cannot earn our way to heaven. We can't be a good enough person. We can't do enough good deeds. And when you stand before God, it will not matter how much you've given to charity. It won't matter if you think you've been good enough. You're a good person. You never robbed or killed anybody. Our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. It is by grace that we are saved through faith. It is not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace, meaning an unearned gift. We cannot earn it. We don't deserve it. Meaning we cannot earn our way to heaven. We only deserve to go to heaven. We don't deserve salvation. We don't deserve Jesus. But God loves us enough that he made a way for us to have fellowship with him. And that's by Jesus coming and dying for us. And we always follow the gospel with a warning of Jesus' in my return. Because right now, you can personally know who Jesus is, but one day soon, and how soon we don't know, but complete hell and earth will come. We can see it coming. The world is getting darker by the minute. The Bible predicts that the shadow of the tribulation is so big right now. We can barely see light around it. And one day soon, the restrainer who is holding all hell back will be removed and then the tribulation will begin and it will be a time of terrifying supernatural events scarier than any movie you've seen or nightmare you ever had each day will get progressively worse it'll be literal hell on earth it is coming bible prophecy is jumping off the page and i want you to know jesus personally before all this hell breaks loose because right now before the tribulation we are under the age of grace which means that right now is the easy way out to come to Jesus. All you have to do is sincerely believe in who he is. Believe what Jesus did for you on the cross. And surrender your life to him. Accept his free gift. That free ticket into heaven that was given to you by grace. That you didn't deserve that ticket. You can't earn that ticket, but he's freely given you that ticket to get to heaven. But after the tribulation begins, the age of grace will be over and it will be complete hell on earth. And it'll be the hard way then. And it won't be just accepting Jesus. It'll be a lot more. You have to lay down your life and die for Jesus. But I love you and I don't want that for you. So that's why we're warning you right now before the tribulation starts. Because it is coming. Like we said, the shadow is so big right now. We can barely see that around it. People call it global warming. But the tribulation is coming. We see it coming. And we want you to come to Jesus before all this goes down. So right now, before the tribulation, before the age of grace is over, please turn to Jesus today. Because one thing is for sure, the Bible's clear. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. And even if we are here to see some of the hell that's coming, who knows how long we'll be able to survive. But the point 
is at the end is here. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. You need to turn to Jesus today while you still have the time. You do not have time to keep putting Jesus off. So if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today while you still have the time. So whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now, maybe you think that you ain't been a good enough person, that if you walk into a church house, the ceiling will fall down. Maybe you're waiting until the kids are out of the house or you get to a point in time in your life where you feel financially secure. Whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now, do not put Jesus off any longer because there is no guarantee you will live to see tomorrow. And if you die before coming to Jesus, when you stand before God, it will be too late for excuses. So turn to Jesus today. Today is the day of salvation. So if you would like to be saved, we have in the description box a link to the ABCs of salvation and a sample prayer. But these are just templates and outline of what you could say to be saved. It is not a repeat after me. There are no magic words to be saved. These words are not even important. But if you would like to be saved, it just needs to be a sincere prayer from your heart that you cannot do this on your own, that you need a Savior. You and you are admitting that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, in need of Jesus. We all are. Saved or not, we're all sinners in need of a Savior, in need of Jesus. And you are repenting of your sins, which means you're turning away. You're having a change of heart, a change of mind. And whatever you may be battling right now, say it's an addiction. Whatever you're battling, if you trust in the Lord and let him, then the Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you, and change you if you let him. Meaning, the Lord can take that addiction if you let him. Don't fight him on it, though. If you let him, he'll take the addiction. He'll take whatever is, he'll change you if you let him. I pray you got some nuts, but never take my word for it. No one on this earth has the answers. Whether it's the most famous preacher or the smartest person in the world, they do not have the answers. Only God does. And you will only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. And it is so very important to read the Bible for yourself. Just picking a random verse or listen to someone read or preach for a few minutes. You will not get the full picture. They only scratch the surface of what is in the Bible. And as we said, with every wind of doctrine coming around, you need to be rooted in the Word to know what the truth is. And, that, and how you get rooted in the Word to know what the truth is is read the Bible for yourself. And also the Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, or struggle that you may be going through right now. Because as we said, when you're rooted in the Word and trouble comes along, you'll know where your help comes from. And in the description box, we have several sources to read the Bible if you do not have a physical book. And if you need prayer today, please reach out to us. We want to stand in agreement with you and pray for your needs. Or if you have a praise report, please share it with us. We would love to praise Jesus right along with you for what the Lord is doing in your life. Well, I pray you guys another the video today. If you did, give God glory. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow if the Lord tarries or I'll see you in the clouds.